So this is the first in my uh, series on left-wing activism and my own personal experience. Um, and I'm going to first of all discuss how um, I got, got into being an activist. And I think it's something worth talking about because some people easily have misconceptions about who these people are who are influencing our, our public discourse and so on and where they're coming from. So, uh, yeah, uh, I got into it when I was about 19, uh, but I wouldn't say I was particularly left wing before I started. Uh, I was quite right wing, I'd say, at the time. So, yeah, I spent about five years as an activist involved in radical activities, not just your typical Bernie Sanders type socialist or whatever it may be. Um, you know, I was involved in a, a Marxist influenced group um, encompassing from socialism to communism, maybe even a bit of an anarchism along the lines of Noam Chomsky. Um, so, yeah, I think it's it's an interesting experience. I think it's worth discussing from an objective point of view um, instead of from a, a kind of tribalist, uh, politically motivated perspective. I think I, I can now look back on it with a certain objective. Um, I'm no longer involved, and, uh, but I still remember those experiences and um, what value was to me. So, yeah, uh, I had an experience that I think was very similar to a lot of people who get involved in, in left-wing activism these days. I was 19, I went to college, and I was exposed to ideas at a time when you were forming and, and not just your um, perspective on the world, but also uh, your perspective even on yourself, you're trying to orient yourself because you're, you're moving away from that rather protective um, zone of childhood where your needs are provided for, you're looked after, you're shielded from danger, all of these things and now suddenly you're in this um, period in your life where you have to stand on your own two feet and face all these difficulties and a certain kind of underlying anxiety that goes with that and if you don't confront that you can end up processing it in, in different ways and turning towards other things to kind of ease your anxieties in some way and um, that was certainly my experience and I think a lot of people who get involved in, in political ideology in some form have uh, some sort of personal stake to it that they may even not acknowledge to themselves. Um, so yeah, in my experience I remember being at that time, I'd say somewhat centre-right in my political views, which I kind of inherited from just my parents or mainstream media. I inherited those views it was around the time of the financial crisis, uh, which hit Ireland very, very hard. And I attended a debate in university debating Ireland's response to the crisis, which was very harsh, it was a difficult time for everybody, uh, I think everybody would, would acknowledge that, and it was basically a debate along the lines of, of left versus right, um, and the left arguing could have been much nicer for people, uh, that it was corrupt, uh, that we could have gone down a different way instead of bailing out the banks, or uh, keeping the responsibility for the crisis on to ordinary people, we could have, say, taxed the rich people, the billionaires, or taxed the multinationals, and not had that kind of problem. Um, and that's quite enticing for people, not just people who are affected by the crisis, but even young people who are up who are trying to make sense of this debate, which I have to say, I, I just struggled for years to really come to terms with what was going on, there's just words being used that you've never heard before. So, um, yeah, I attended this debate and not only did I <laughs> listen but even participate when I, the audience were allowed to um, participate and I made some, some 
the capitalist argued for capitalism along the lines that I think most people are familiar that capitalism will encourage meritocracy, uh, capitalism is consistent with human nature, all these things. And I got a response from one of the academics there um, who I think quite coherently argued that that's not the full picture. Argued that capitalism is not a meritocracy. There are other factors that go in. So people have advantages over other people, let's say, from their upbringing, from birth, and that uh, people in disadvantaged backgrounds have been much, much harder. Um, which is, of course, true. Um, he argued that we could encourage other kind of qualities that maybe not as. Um, what would we say rewarded in capitalism? We use the example of nurses or other caring professions who don't earn as much compared to or a military. And those are legitimate criticisms, and I would have to acknowledge that that's uh, a fair observation. Maybe wasn't presented to, to the same extent. Uh, up to that point from what I had read and, and experienced to that point so um, I have to acknowledge that he, he was on to something there and that brought my curiosity towards his group of people that made him completely off the wall um, and I started to read into the topic I started to attend meetings and become more curious um, it all emerged really from an attempt to discredit socialism and to prove them wrong and to understand their arguments, but I did find myself somewhat persuaded. And I think this is a similar experience to many people, who, particularly young people who go to college, where I think because a robust, open, honest debate isn't really had along these political, philosophical lines, we get a very, very condensed, oversimplified version of, of the world and of our society, that when you do come across an activist, you do say, go to university for instance, and suddenly you're presented with opinions and arguments um, that do have some merit. Maybe they aren't the complete answer, there are limitations to those arguments, there are fast counter arguments, but because you haven't engaged fully intellectually, you've been brought up in an environment just to believe a certain version of events and not to properly scrutinize them, you struggle to actually um, come to terms with these uh, ideas and arguments, and you become actually drawn towards them. You take the next step, which is not just intellectual curiosity and scrutiny, but to become an activist, a movement activist, which is exactly what they want to do. Um, when I attended the first event, shortly after that debate, they held something along the lines of a festival of ideas, um, just different topics, different speakers, and so on. And they basically acknowledged that it was a very recruiting exercise for them. Um, at the end, of course, on the beginning, there's all this open their mind, open discussion, and so on. Over time, it became clear that it was a, a chance to recruit people. As soon as your interest was peaked, they would hand you an application form to join the movement and become an activist. That's all what they wanted. And when I became involved, I soon came to realize that they didn't just want me to intellectually engage, they wanted me to do the work on the ground. So I did that to a certain extent for a few years before. Um, further scrutinizing their ideas. Um, so, yeah, I think it's worth acknowledging even somebody who's skeptical of socialism and uh, leftism. There is a certain appeal. You have to understand why people get involved. You can't just simply um, dismiss it as hysteria or um, the innocence of youth. That's just so rising. If everything's just about the innocence of youth, um, how do you communicate to young people who are looking for a direction? Um, 
not just young people. Uh, I came across older people who were badly affected by the financial crisis, who were looking for answers. Um, couldn't find a sympathetic voice. Eventually went to these left wing intellectuals who offered them something that wasn't being offered elsewhere. So I think it's worth acknowledging these things. Um, and uh, that's my experience. Um, over time, I started to scrutinize these views more and more. Um, but at the beginning, it, it was a, an educational experience, it was a learning experience. And I went there because I was meant to be sexual curiosity. Um, and it did allow me to engage in the world, which is why I would knock it. There's a certain value to that intellectual engagement of going so deep into something, We're almost tearing the world apart intellectually. Everything you see around you, you're questioning the whole thing. Um, and for me, that's what was like. That was the appeal for me because I am um, quite an intellectually curious person. Um, so it is appealing for people like myself. But the trick is to keep up that intellectual curiosity and to scrutinize the ideas that the activists are presenting, as well as the conventional or so called establishment ideas. Um, so that's my experience, and uh, that's how I got involved. Um, and I'd, uh, I'd love to explain more about. Uh, what my experience was as an activist, and how I got away from it, but um, that's 